so circuit section ambivag, always when we start, I think that was part of your first exam as well. So all of the components of the circuit, so it's the face mask, the Y piece, entitled CO2 connected to both the Y piece and the defend, your two lens circuit and filters, and the reservoir bag. Section, um, troubleshooting section, if you don't hear the hissing sound, it is not on. Okay, so if you don't hear a hiss, you have to troubleshoot. Uh, sometimes it's just as simple as like flipping a switch, other times you really have to follow the tubing all the way back and make sure that all of the pieces of the canister are connected and that it's firmly sealed or seated in the little holder that it sits in. And every now and then there's a little dial that is like a valve that opens up the flow from the manifold. Okay, so there's suction and then we have our ambivalent bag. So, emphasis on suction, this is the S of Samkai, so just, so y'all really get it, suction is important. Um, a is for airway, so that means that you have all, all aspects of airway management that you think that you're going to need for this case and this patient readily available or at least within reach. So, always you're going to have OPAs, at least two sizes, one that you think the patient's going to need, and then you can either size up or down depending on what your assessment of their airway is. Um, generally for men, I'll grab 100. Generally for women, I grab a 90. Um, tongue blade for OPA insertion. I actually used the tongue blade to get the VL in yesterday. I had to. There was no way to get it in. Um, anyway, ET tube. You have an ET tube appropriately sized for your patient. Generally, men seven and a half, um, eight if you know they're going to go to the ICU long term. Um, generally, women are the seven, sizing up for much larger women or you know again long term ICU uh, expect expectations. Um, so. You're going to check, make sure your balloon works. You have to disconnect the syringe to make sure that the balloon works. If you keep the syringe, con or the syringe connected, you're not actually testing the valve on the pilot balloon. So you're going to inflate the balloon, make sure it holds pressure, and then deflate it, and you're going to keep your syringe attached to your ET tube. Your laryngoscope. Check it, make sure the light works. Just blind it myself. If uh, the light does not work, get a new handle or replace the battery. I like to keep this kind of tidy. So that was my airway. So now if I were going to use an LMA, I'd make sure I had the size LMA that I thought the patient needed opened, prepared. So for me, that means um, slightly deflated, just very slightly deflated with lubricant on it, a tongue blade, gauze. And then also a backup ET tube because I would say Maybe 10% of the time, maybe 15% of the time, your LMA is just not going to see, right? There's going to be some kind of issue, and you're going to have to intubate. So you want your intubating equipment ready if you're going to plan to use an LMA. Or if you're going to do a MAT case, having an LMA and an ET tube available. So that's airway. Um, the first M is for machine. Machine needs to be turned on. Um, you want to make sure your APL is open, that you're in bag mode, your vaporizers are off, your O2 flow is off. Little caveat asterisk situation here. Some providers will want you to just keep the FiO2 on all the time. Um, and that's just so that you don't accidentally forget to turn the O2 on. So if you have it on all the time, you at the very least know they're getting some either even low flow of 100% uh, FiO2. Anyways, but flow is off, APL open, bag mode. Vaporizers are off, and then you want to make sure that you can hold pressure. So for every time you put a new circuit on the machine, you need to test the circuit to ensure that you can hold positive pressure. So just like you did for your machine check, you're going to close your APL to 30, and you're going to inflate your reservoir bag until you hit a pressure of 30, and then you're just going to make sure that you can hold pressure. And then opening the APL to uh, ensure its function. So that was the first M machine. 
monitors. So you have all of your monitors, uh, EKG, SpO2, and uh, blood pressure. You have all of your monitors up here with the appropriate alarm settings. Um, what's a good SpO2 alarm? Well, you don't want it to alarm if you're going to... Yeah. Yeah, okay. A um, couple of caveats about this particular simple app and the iPad. Um, when you open up this app, this is for the website, Howie? Yes. Come on uh. over. So then everybody can see, because the simple app is really integral to your guys' learning here. So um, it defaults to this setting. You're going to get rid of the defibrillator panel, and then tap here. It defaults to KPA. You want to tap it so that it's millimeters of mercury, so it's numbers you guys recognize. Um, and then to manipulate vital signs, and obviously the person who's performing Samtide and induction is not going to be the one manipulating the vital signs. But you go to vitals, you turn all of these on, you can toggle parameters here, you can give yourself PVCs, um, manipulate the systolic and diastolic arterial pressures, IDE ratios, respiratory rate, and entitled CO2. So we'll just hit update there. And then you get readings. Okay, so you want to make sure that you have appropriate alarm settings. So you're going to set alarms and then adjust accordingly. So we'll change that there. Probably going to change that to 120. I'm going to set my low blood pressure to 90 and high to 165. All right, so those are my alarm settings. And I have all of the other alarm monitors that are ASA requirements. So standard ASA, I'm just going to turn this off just so it's not interrupting me. Every five minutes, all of those vitals need to be documented. So heart rate, EKG, uh, pulse ox, EKG, blood pressure, every five. For children, temperature is also a requirement. Not necessarily a requirement for adults, although you have to use your best judgment. Most people still monitor, myself included. Um, so that was the second M. T is for tape. Do not put tape on the machine for me. It's gross and leaves sticky residue everywhere. Not cool. Um, so what I like to do is put tape for the eyes on the mask. You set yourself up. It's right there. It's a little reminder. Tape the eyes. Just like that. So you have tape for the eyes, and then you have tape for your ET tube. Good habit to leave the tape with a little tab, a folded tab on the end so you can pull it off easier. So T, tape. I is for IV poles. You need two IV poles that have a clamp on them so that you can secure the drapes when they come their way. Um, other parts of I, so the IV infusion, so you want to make sure that the patient has um, an IV bag with a working IV. The days of you pushing drugs uh, with a flush are over. You will be pushing in IV bags that are just continuously running and you're just going to push into the stream of fluid that's bolusing from the bag. Um, so that was I. D is for drugs. So we have our induction drugs here on the anesthesia machine. So my expectation for your exam is that you have the plunger pulled back to your anticipated induction dose. Okay, your drugs need to be labeled with the drug name, the drug concentration, your date, excuse me, your initials, the date, and the time. Um, you do not need to write the dose on here, just the concentration. Okay? Um, so if I were, yeah. I'll just do it on the exam. So then, you know, we have Fernsed, fentanyl, lidocaine. Everybody is going to be doing a lap coli on a healthy 20-year-old. So those are our induction drugs. And then our um, emergency drugs, our Apple's. 
So atropine, propofol, phenylephrine, these are not appropriately labeled. Just that's why I do better than me. Okay? We'll edit that out. <laughs> uh, then your sex and epi. The epi should be 10 mics per mil. All right. And then, so that was D. And then E is everything else. This is our lazy umbrella catch-all for everything else that's not covered under the rest of SAM 2. All right. So that would be your bear hugger, uh, your peripheral nerve stimulator, and then case-dependent other things. So, like if you're doing a lap pulley, you'd want to put an OG tube in. So you, you have an OG tube out. Um, if you're going to do like a fempop bypass, maybe you make sure that we have the uh, machine to run the ACTs. Um, yeah, and that's it. That's that's E. Everything else. So biz monitor would also under, fall under that. Any cerebral oximetry. All right, um, so we can do, I'll just do a run through for you guys. I will need an assistant to help me with intubation. Um, on your rubric, there is something for uh, infection control, you know, putting on eye goggles and, um, you know, care of contaminated equipment. Um, you're welcome to put your dirty stuff in like a, Kidney basin, there's a million of them in one of those cabinets over there. Oh, there's one right here. Um, the thing I really care about is that you're putting gloves on. You will almost, unless somebody has COVID, I haven't seen somebody put, or you know, a trauma, I haven't seen anybody put goggles on for like a regular intubation ever. So, there's that. All right, so gloves for your, um, for your intubation and all of that. All right. So this is me doing the exam. All right, coming in. Circuit, suction, and ambu bag. So I have my face mask, my two lens circuit with HMEs. Um, I've got my end tidal CO2 connected to the Y piece and the defense with my reservoir bag. I have working sections. Um, and then I have an ambu bag over here. So onto SAM tide. So again, I have a working suction. I have my airway equipment. My laryngoscope uh, light works. I have my ET tube. A balloon holds pressure. I have two oral airways, uh, a size 90 and 100, and I have my tongue blade. Uh, my machine is on, my flows are off, my vaporizers are off, APL is open, I'm in bag mode. Um, I do also like to have the bellows up. I think it's a good habit to get into. And then I'm going to pressurize my circuit and make sure I can hold pressure. So, okay, and I'm holding for 10 seconds. That was 10 seconds. So that was my machine check and then uh, my monitors. I have my blood pressure, pulse ox, and uh, EKG. I have the uh, proper alarm settings on my monitor here. I have tape for my eyes on the mask and then I have my ET tube tape. I have two IV poles, and when I saw my patient in pre-op, they had a working IV with IV fluids connected. I have my um, induction drugs here. So I have Versed, which is one milligram per mil. I have two milligrams drawn up. I have fentanyl. Fentanyl is 50 mics per mil. I have 100 mics drawn up. Lidocaine, 2% is 20 milligrams per mil. I have 100 milligrams of lidocaine. Uh, I have propofol, which is 10 milligrams per mil. I have 200 milligrams drawn up. And then I have rocuronium, which is 10 milligrams per mil. I have 60 milligrams drawn up. And again, this is for a lap pulley for a healthy 20-year-old that weighs 100 kilos. And then I have my emergency drugs. So this is atropine. Um, 
Atropine is 0.4 mg per mil. We have one mil, or excuse me, 0.4 milligrams there in one mil. Uh, propofol, again, I have 200 milligrams here. That's 10 milligrams per mil. The phenylephrine, uh, this is 100 mics per mil. I have one milligram. Lidocaine, 2%, again, 20 milligrams per mil, 100 milligrams. Succinylcholine is 20 milligrams per mil. There are 200 milligrams here. And then I have epi diluted to 10 mics per mil. There is 100 mics here. So those are my drugs. Um, and then E is everything else. So um, I have an OG tube, which I can't find. We used to have an OG tube. It's gone missing. Somebody OG'd themselves at home, I guess. Um, so we have OG tube, I have a bear hugger, and I have a peripheral nerve stimulator. Um, so like I said, I saw the patient in pre-op. I've told the circulator that they can go get the patient. So they're on their way back. And here's our patient. All right. Hi, John. Long time no see. He's scooting himself over to the operating table, and I'm giving two milligrams of Versip. Turning my O2 on. We're going to put this mask on you. This is the best air in the valley. Take some nice big deep breaths. Tilt your chin up for me. Excellent. Okay, nice big deep breaths. And then, uh, Kenzie, will you hold this for me? So just hold the mask there. Um, I'm going to put my uh, EKG leads on. There's no way to actually put them on this, so this is a verbalizing thing. So putting my EKG line, uh, pulse ox, and blood pressure. I'm going to cycle a blood pressure. Um, and I'm going to give the fentanyl. And I'm going to give the 100 milligrams of lidocaine. All right, keep taking those really big, deep breaths. I am assessing my heart rate, pulse ox, blood pressure. I'm looking at the vent to um, assess my end tidal O2 and also to assess how big a breath is he actually taking. If I don't see good end tidal CO2, most of the time you can infer that it's probably not a good seal. So if that's the case, then I'll just, oh, hey, do you mind pulling the cheek up or you know push down a little bit further in the spot and then problem solved. Um, so at this point, I see uh, we're going to do an anesthesia timeout. I see my end tidal O2 is greater than 80. Uh, I have all of my vials connected and they look okay. And I have high flow 100% um, FiO2. So now I know it's safe to push my propofol. So I'm pushing my propofol. You might feel a little spicy in the IV. That's totally normal. This is a medicine that helps you go to sleep. I'll take great care of you. All right, and then you're going to see the face start to relax. You're going to see your entitled CO2 line fade away. Um, and you're going to say, hey, are you still awake? Are you with me? No. And then you're going to check a lash reflex. If there is no response, you can go ahead and take the eyes. Thank you, Kenzie. I'll take over. I'm going to do a little chin lift here, close my APL to 20, and attempt to ventilate. I am looking for chest rise, I'm looking for fog in the mask, and I'm looking for entitled CO2. If I do not see any of those things, I'm going to put an OPA in. This solves the problem 99% of the time if you can't ventilate. So I have established that I can ventilate. Now I'm going to push my paralytic. 60 milligrams of rocuronium. Turn this up a little bit. And this is it. We're just hanging out here and we're ventilating. And as the paralytic sets in, you're going to feel like, oh, it's easier to, it's easier to bag. This, oh, this is good. I'm happy. While this is happening, I'm going to bring my intubating equipment over. Do you mind assisting me for intubation? All right, so we'll say 90 seconds have passed, so I'm gonna ask you to hand me the tube when the time comes. So just hand it to me like that. So my hand will come here. You don't need to hold the syringe. So hold it with this hand. There you go. 
All right, so time to intubate. You're gonna bring the bed up to whatever height you need, which makes it ergonomic for you. You are going to scissor, put the blade in. You're gonna sweep the lips, make sure that you don't have a lip pinched. And you're gonna lift. I have a grade two A view, thank you. And through the cord, style it, please. Thank you. And then I'm gonna inflate my cuff. And I am confirming placement. I'm watching for fog in the tube, I'm watching for chest rise, and I'm watching for entitled CO2. Um, I'm also going to grab a stethoscope, which you would obviously already have around your neck. And you're going to listen, left, right, and then for extra, extra good measure, we're going to negative exogastric. I'm going to turn my vent on, open the APL, turn my flows down to two liters. Um, if your machine had air, you could do one and one. I'm going to turn your SIVO on. I have it dialed into three. Then I'm going to sweep back. Flows are low. It feels open. I'm in vent mode. I'm assessing the ventilator to make sure I'm getting adequate tidal volumes and looking at waveforms, peak pressures. And I'm also looking at the monitor to um, check blood pressure. Right? We just did give a pretty walloping dose of propofol. Healthy 20 year olds is generally not a problem, but plenty of other patients do not tolerate that as well. Um, so you're just going to assess all of those things and make little tweaks as necessary or maybe push some phenylephrine if your intubation did not correct your induction hypotension. Um, and at this point, once I've made sure everything's all good, I'm going to secure the tube. So we'll do this one more time. Taping the tube. I like to tape right from the roll. I start at the left side of the face, make a little mustache and hug the ET tube down by the lip. Don't walk the tape up the tube. You're just gonna wrap around itself one more time. Make a little tab there at the end too. So you have a tab on each end. There is very little tenting here um, and that is a very secure tube. And that's it. That's the end of the exam. In real life, then you're going to go back and sweep again and keep doing stuff. Drop your OG tube, drop your antibiotics, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Right, what questions do you guys have? Um, how, how deep did you have to go into the Oh, that's a good question, Alex. I am 21 at the end. And it changes, right? Depending on the person's airway, absolutely. Generally, 21, 22, sometimes 20, sometimes 23. Outside of 20 to 23, so those are lifetime home far ends of the bell curve. You don't see it too often, but you can see it. Then get up to So on exam day, um, all of these empty syringes um, and all of these labels will be in the other room and you're going to just bring your drugs in, like in a baggie or whatever, and lay them on there so that you're not spending 20 minutes in your label. Yeah, you'll do it in your room. Doing a close up of how to tape, so let me get this patient. Oh, you guys need a new blade here. The light on this laryngoscope is garbage. Can you hold? Can somebody hold the patient so it doesn't slide? I mean, we're gonna have to redo this. Okay. Uh, I'm like, this is looking bad. No worries. This is looking bad. Oh, the fresh is the best. Alright, take two. So 
to take the two. Have a tab on the end. You're going to start at the left side and the lower angle of the mandible. Make a mustache so you're not taping on the lip itself. And then you keep the tape very close to the lip to avoid making any tenting here. Don't pinch the lip. A second loop. And then kind of cinch it down there to again avoid any tenting. So this would be the weakest part of the whole thing. And then bring it back down to the right side. That lower angle of the mandible. Another little tab. And you're good. You got these tabs like to... Yeah, so you don't have to like dig into somebody's skin to get the tape up. That's it. And confirming placement, a couple breaths. Left, right, negative epigastric. So the, the key thing is obviously your ET2 is going to be on the secure yeah. arm and then yeah, you have sweeps. It's really important just to make sure that it's in the tree. You don't want to move it and then like have all that track and pulling it. Angle of the mandible. Two loopy loops and, and kind of a straight line. Straight mustache. Okay. Two. Why do I?